environmental and resource context in organization. We all know that the environment is the set of forces surrounding an organization that have the potential to affect the way it operates and its access to scarce resources. In this lesson, we will discuss the forces of organization environment, describe the general and specific environment, explain the Lorentz and Lorsch theory of environment, describe the theories of organizational change, and state the transaction cost theory. After going through this presentation, you should be able to explain organizational environment, general and specific environment, sources of uncertainty in organizational environment, Lorentz and Lorsch theory on environment fit, theories of organizational change, and transaction cost theory. Forces in the environment that affect an organization's ability to secure these scarce resources include competition from rivals for customers, rapid changes in technology, increase in price of inputs, all these factors erode an organization's competitive advantage. Environment includes five factors. First is economic. Economic environment refers to all forces that have an economic impact on business. There is a close relationship between business and its economic environment. Second is politico-legal. The three political institutions, legislature, executive, and judiciary exert influence and control business activities. A stable and dynamic political environment is necessary and is indispensable for the growth of business. Third is sociocultural. Factors that can be included in the sociocultural environment include people's attitude to work and wealth, role of marriage and family life, religion and education, ethical issues and social responsiveness of business. Fourth is technological. Technology is the systematic application of knowledge to practical tasks. Fifth is global. Organizations are forced to view business issues from a global perspective. The customer, the distributors, the unions, the competitors, the suppliers and the government form the specific environment. An organization attempts to structure its transactions with the environment to protect and enlarge its domain so that it can increase its ability to create value for its stakeholders like shareholders, employees, customers, etc. Customer satisfaction is the ultimate aim of all economic activity. This involves more than the offer of products at the lowest possible price. An important force in the environment of a business enterprise is the suppliers, who supply the enterprise with inputs like raw materials and components. The associations formed by workers have come to be known as trade unions. A firm's competitors include not only the other firms that market the same or similar products but also those who compete for the discretionary income of the consumers. General Environment the general environment consists of forces that shape the specific environment and affect the ability of all organizations in a particular environment to obtain resources. General environment includes cultural forces, international forces, political forces, environmental forces, economic forces and technological forces. Cultural and social values affect a country's attitude towards both domestic and overseas products and companies. Organizations must be able to learn about and have access to technological developments abroad that might provide a low-cost advantage. Environmental forces influence government policy towards organizations. Business organization is an institution through which new discoveries are converted into goods and services. When environment becomes more complex, more unstable and poorer, the level of uncertainty increases. The capacity of an environment refers to the degree to which it can support growth. Rich and growing environments generate excess resources which can be used by organization in times of difficult and relative scarcity. First, environmental complexity. Complexity can increase greatly when specific and general forces in the environment become interconnected. 
When an organization is complex, it becomes difficult to predict and control the flow of resources. Environmental complexity thus is a function of strength, number and interconnectedness of the specific and general forces that an organization has to manage. Second is environmental dynamism. An environment is said to be stable if forces affecting the supply of resources can be predictable while the environment is said to be dynamic. If the organization cannot predict the way the forces will change over time. Third is environmental richness. Environmental richness is a function of the amount of resources available to support an organization's domain. Environments are poor for two reasons. First is the organization may be located in a poor country or region and second there is a high level of competition and organizations may not be able to get the resources desired. Lawrence and Losch identified three main sub-environments. First is the market sub-environment corresponding to sales. Second is the technical sub-environments corresponding to production. Third is the scientific sub-environments corresponding to research and development. The Lawrence and Losch identified organizational parts or subsystems as marketing, production and research. The extent of differentiation between departments was greater in an uncertain environment than when they were in a stable environment. The conclusions made by Lawrence and Losch were reinforced by Burns and Stocker when they concluded that organizations need different kinds of structure to control activities when they need to adapt and respond to change in the environment. Studies by Lawrence and Losch and by Burns and Stocker indicate that organizations should adapt their structure to reflect the degree of uncertainty in their environment. Theories of organizational change First is resource dependence theory. Organizations are dependent on the environment for the resources they need to survive and grow. According to resource dependency theory, the goal of an organization is to minimize its dependence on other organizations for the supply of scarce resources. To manage their resource dependence and control their access to scarce resources, organizations develop various strategies. Second is managing interdependencies in specific environment. In the specific environment, an organization needs to manage its relationship with suppliers, unions and customer interest groups. Symbiotic interdependencies. In this type of interdependencies, the output of one organization is input for another organization. To manage symbiotic interdependencies, organizations have a range of strategies such as good reputation, cooperation and strategic alliances. Next is managing competitive resource interdependencies. Competition threatens the supply of scarce resources and increases the uncertainty of the specific environment. Competitive interdependencies are interdependencies that exist among organizations that compete for scarce inputs and outputs. Merger is also called absorption of weaker units by a stronger unit. Amalgamation means a new company is formed to take over the existing business of all the amalgamating, amalgamating companies. The resource dependency model states that a subunit's power is based on subunit's control of those resources required by other subunits or departments. According to transaction cost theory, the goal of the organization is to minimize the cost of exchanging resources in the environment and the cost of managing exchanges inside the organization. Sources of transaction costs are environmental uncertainty and bounded rationality, opportunism and small numbers, and risk and specific assets. The environment is characterized by considerable uncertainty and complexity. People only have a limited ability to process information and to understand the environment surrounding them. When the prospects for opportunism is high because a small number of suppliers to which an organization can go for resources, the organization has to expand resources to negotiate, monitor and enforce agreements with its suppliers to protect itself. The transaction costs associated with the investment become too high and the value that could have been created is lost. 
Next, using transaction cost theory to choose inter-organizational strategy. Transaction cost theory brings into focus the cost associated with the different linkage mechanism. The most important linkage mechanism used by organizations are Kiretsu. Kiretsu is the Japanese term for the mechanism for achieving the benefits of a formal linkage mechanism without incurring its costs. Franchising. A franchisee is a business that is authorized to sell a company's products in a certain area. Outsourcing. Outsourcing is moving a value creation activity that was performed inside an organization to outside organizations. The best mechanism for an organization is one that minimizes transaction and bureaucratic costs. If you have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly, an outsourcing is a business that is authorized to sell a company's products in a certain area. Right or wrong? Wrong. According to resource dependency theory, the goal of an organization is to minimize its dependence on other organizations for the supply of scarce resources. Right or wrong? Right. A franchisee is moving a value creation activity that was performed inside an organization to outside organizations. Right or wrong? Wrong. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. Business responses and managerial practices must be fine-tuned to survive in the global environment. The environment is the set of forces surrounding an organization that have the potential to affect the way it operates and its access to scarce resources. The customer, the distributors, the unions, the competitors, the suppliers and the government form the specific environment. An organization establishes its domains by deciding which customers it is going to serve and then decides how to manage the forces in its general environment to maximize its ability to secure the needed resources. When environment becomes more complex, more unstable and poorer, the level of uncertainty increases. According to resource dependency theory, the goal of an organization is to minimize its dependence on other organizations for the supply of scarce resources. Organizations try to find mechanisms that make inter-organizational transactions relatively more efficient. An organization needs to evaluate the benefits and costs of different inter-organizational strategies and choose the one that best allows it to secure valuable resources.